<laughs> okay, so I'm Victoria Batha, and um, obviously my Instagram handle is the Plotty Snob. Obviously, I'm repping. Um, I am a classical plies instructor based out of New York City. I work with Alicia Angaro at Alicia Angaro's Real Pilates in Manhattan. I teach at both of the studio locations, uptown and downtown. My title is like, I guess, movement specialist, um, Pilates snob, uh, COO, <laughs> CEO, CFO, all of those titles. Um, so yeah, that's my deal. That's my shtick right there. Very cool. Yeah. Um, so how long have you been in this Pilates game for? I've been teaching Pilates for five years mm -hmm. and um, I, I started elsewhere. I didn't start at Alicia's studio, but um, I've been teaching through Real Pilates for four years okay. or so. Nice, nice. And I always ask the question, like, how do people like, how did you find Pilates or did Pilates find you, right? Like, yeah, so I, Pilates found me, I suppose. Pilates was literally like mandated upon me because when I was in college, I was on the rowing team at Syracuse. And during winter training, when obviously we couldn't really be out on the water, um, we had 30 minutes of yoga and 30 minutes of Pilates, um, like Wednesday mornings or something. So that was really my first introduction to Pilates mat work. Um, and then I sort of forgot about it. And then when I moved to Manhattan, I got back into Pilates mostly through the apparatus, reformers, and um, mostly just a reformer, honestly, because I started at a more contemporary space, and contemporary studios love the reformer. Um, so that's like kind of how I got my start uh, in probably when I was like 24. So I'm 30. Uh, I think I'm 30. I think I'm 30. And my birthday soon. I don't know. Like this year just flew by. And it's just, yeah. Totally. I don't count this year. So I'm going to be 30. I, am I 31? Wait, I think I'm 31. <laughs> Wait, so this year just like doesn't count, but I'm 31. I'm going to be 32. But I totally forgot that. I haven't had to tell anyone. Yeah, I haven't sure. seen anybody. <laughs> I'm 31. Anyway, so it was like seven years ago. But okay. yeah. <laughs> nice. Too funny. Um, God, I'm 31. Weird. It's so funny, you know, when people say like their first experience with Pilates, whether it's like mat or contemporary or classical or like someone crushed them in their first workout or it was super easy or it's forgettable. I think that that really informs how we teach moving forward. Right. Right. So can you tell me about like what were your mat classes like as a mandatory off season training for rowing? horrible I hated them so much I also like I hate and I'm so sorry to anybody but like I really don't enjoy yoga and okay. these classes were at like six in the morning and we were like required to be there and first we started with yoga and then we went to Pilates and sometimes we flip-flopped and like I just found it all to be very miserable um yeah. so in that environment I definitely didn't enjoy it but I went back to Pilates on my own volition when I was living in Manhattan I had um class pass which is kind of like a gym pass. And I started going to different Pilates studios and I really enjoyed that. Cause I could go from like studio A to B to C and I was hopping around and I was figuring out like, okay, what are the differences? Like what, what do I gain from this studio versus that studio? And I really started liking Pilates. And also um, I hate to say, but I was like good at it. So I was like, oh my God, like an exercise that I really think is effective for my body, but I'm also like good at. Which didn't hurt, obviously. Yeah, of course. Um, okay, so then as you go through these different studios in New York and you're trying one to the other, at that point, did you understand like what would what would have been labeled as contemporary? What would have been labeled as classical? Or were you just no. going just going by what you feel? Yeah, I had like no clue. Actually, I started off in a very contemporary space, and I was very high on that space like I loved that studio I went there very often I thought the the owner of the studio was so cool like I was very fangirl and um then I remember actually my first Sorry. classical experience fangirls like over my head because I'm just like I, I was like, like fangirling yeah, like okay. it's like when you like think someone's like so cool it's like having a girl crush like I had a girl crush I thought this okay. girl was so cool and she really is she's an amazing business person and she's built like an empire but um, then I went to my first classical studio and I remember going there and being like, yo F this. Like, I was like, this isn't Pilates. I'm like, mm -hmm. I hate it. It's so different. It's so weird. Why am I bad at it? And I didn't really go back for a bit because I was like, well, I've already like 
reached the pinnacle at this other place and I just like being on top. So I just kept going back to the contemporary studio. Um, and then, you know, kind of didn't really, I, I just didn't get it. I was like, that was different and I didn't like it. And I kind of like stayed away from classical for a bit. Um, but I was definitely curious, like, why was this different? Like why? Mm. And I think that what re- re- really ma- turned me off was I was very intimidated by that. Um, by how difficult the movements were or by yeah by how difficult it was like, like what, yeah what both it? like okay. it was difficult and everyone there knew their shit and I did not and mm-hmm. I walked into it thinking like oh like I got this like I'm so great here yes. and then when I walked in here it was not not the case at all and I definitely was I mean my pride was hurt right like I felt like what the heck? Like I thought I was going to be good at this. And right. so I definitely like kind of shied away from going back, but I was super curious. It definitely like lit a little like light bulb for me. Do you feel like, <laughs> it's so funny, like a nice, very appropriate there. Um, yeah. As an athlete, now being a varsity athlete, do you feel that it was almost like on football, I played football growing up. So there's cool. a sense of like, I carried my high school team and then I go to university and I realize that everyone in the room carried their high school team. So you're yeah. not all that anymore, right? <laughs> right, yes. Was it kind of like that when you step into a classical realm and realize like everyone here is the man and totally. I'm Totally. Yeah. Yeah, it was basically like that. And, you know, I think, I think a lot of, no matter what sort of Pilates you're doing, it's definitely like a community and an environment. And I think there is a, um, like a sense of, it's not, I don't know, but I sort of think like there's a competitive nature and yeah. when you when you come so often you're in these group classes like the people all know one another and especially at my studio now like we haven't had group classes since before covid but you know you would see these people come to these specific group classes and the transition yes. from like 100 to short spine for example it was always like who could shorten the straps first like who can take yes. off their springs first and put down their headrest it's very uh-huh. funny and i think i sensed that at this classical studio and was just like whoa like i'm not ready for this like this is mm-hmm. like too much did you feel not included in that moment? Um, no, I just felt very confused because I okay. thought that I was doing Pilates. <laughs> Obviously yes. I wasn't. Yes. So yeah. that was right. like kind of like a, an awakening of some sort. Um, sure. Like I'm like, what have I been doing like this whole mm. time? Yeah. So. Yeah. And that's it. And all these pieces come together, right? Like it's really interesting how you hated it when it was mandatory. You loved it when it was like in your wheelhouse. And then you hated it again when it wasn't comfortable again. Right. Like all of these things make us better teachers. Totally. Because we have yeah. so much empathy for people who are somewhere in that spectrum. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, I think teaching is so interesting. You know, every day you have these new bodies in front of you. And we're very lucky. We're, we're open. Real Pilates is open. So I'm going to work five days a week and I'm teaching humans in, in person now. Um, and I've gained a lot of new clients th- um, since we've reopened because some instructors aren't back yet or maybe they're back, but their schedule is different. So I'm seeing new people. And um, it's been a really great learning experience for me because every time there's some someone new in front of me, I'm like, okay, what is what is your your goal? What are your hesitations? What brought you to the method? Um, and how can we work together to make sure that like you enjoy this hour yes. and get something out of it? So my question for you then is, if someone comes in who was like the rock star fangirl in some contemporary studio. <laughs> that happens all the time. And then they roll in like, I've been doing plays for six months and I know everything. Yeah. Do you crush them or do you introduce them to the uh, the amazingness of the classical method? Um, definitely a little bit of both um, because a lot of people walk in and they're like, oh, I've been doing Pilates for like a hundred years. And, um, and then I'll be like, oh, like where have you been doing Pilates? And so sometimes they'll tell me where and I'm like, because it's like one of those like chains or whatever. And not that there's anything wrong with that, but it's just, I know right away that they don't know the difference either. And that's yes. fine. So okay. I want to introduce them to really what classical Pilates can be. Um, especially a man, like if a man walks in the studio and I'm teaching him, I will kill him. Like he will, he will limp out of the studio. Like I want him to get the hardest work out of his life while also like helping him with whatever his issues are. But Mm -hmm. I just think men have much more skepticism about the method, uh, in general. So I really try and like really give them a tough workout, but it's hard because if someone's come to the studio and they don't have any sort of classical background, it's much more important to me that they have these building blocks because you don't want to like skip over all the fundamentals. Mm -hmm. So there are still ways to make very basic exercises um, 
really challenging. So I'll try and just sort of really pull that out of them mm -hmm. in a in an approachable way. While also yes. being like, okay, like this is how we build up to teaser, but I'm gonna make you hold this. Mm -hmm. and you're gonna be here for like 15 seconds and you're gonna hate me, but yes. stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, no, I hear you. So then, okay, so then we're following the path here and we now have fangirls, found Pilates, not feeling the classical because the language is a new language. When right. did you fall in love with the classical piece? When did that finally make sense to you? Like, did so you continue to go back? Yeah, so I used to work um, full time in commercial, sorry, in residential real estate in Manhattan. So that was my job. It was very stressful. I loved it, um, certain aspects of it, but it was very stressful. Like I'd wake up in the middle of the night with like a notepad by my bed, things that I forgot to do during the day. And it's very much like a 24 hour job. You're always on. Um, and I had a shift in my workplace where I sort of, um, basically like, got fired, but I was still working for, yeah, yes. I was still working for the, the, t um, the company. I just wasn't on the same team anymore. And in that moment, it was like this big reset where I was like, okay, this is not serving me and my, my soul, <laughs> you know, like this yeah. is literally eating away at it. So it kind of allowed me to take a step back and be like, what's something I can introduce into my life that will make me feel more fulfilled. And I was very into fitness at the time. So I actually wrote this like amazing cover letter to become a flywheel spin instructor and okay. um, never heard back from them. But I also then was like, okay, well, I also love Pilates. So I kind of like approached a few different studios about their teacher training program. And it just goes to show like how little I still knew about the differences between them because I reached out to... Um, two classical spaces, which I didn't know really were classical, and then one contemporary space. Yep. And the contemporary studio just happened to have a teacher training that started before the others. And I was like, okay, like sold. So I went there. Um, it was a very disappointing experience, um, but I was very fortunate in that I also decided like, if I'm going to pivot into exercise, I really wanna be like super, like I'm like immersed. all or nothing, like all yes. in. Yes. So I also applied for a job just to work at the front desk of Real Pilates. So that's how I started there. Okay. Yeah. And I was doing a contemporary teacher training on the side and I was working at Real Pilates at the front desk. And like a that was a, all of a sudden. very much so. It was a very <laughs> strange experience because yes. here I am like doing this contemporary training, which yeah. was very loosely organized. Like there weren't necessarily seminars or sort of like just observe a bunch of things. And I was just like, what is going on? And so then I'm at Real Bodies and it's like, I'm watching these people come in and like, it was very interesting to say the least. And that's sort of when I realized like, okay, like I'm gonna take what I can from this training that I'm doing at this studio, but I need to like do this, the classical training when I'm done. And that sort of just totally changed my mentality, like watching the clients and the instructors who I felt were, I was so, um, not intimidated. I was so curious and also just like in awe of the instructors at the studio yes. um, at Real Bodies. I just felt like, you know, they were like proper adults that had been studying this method and exercise for like a long time. Whereas like, you know, some studios, it's just like a lot yes. of like young, like fit girls. Just trendy and, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. and this was like very different. Like these felt like people that I was really looking up to. And I felt that that was very important for me to have mentors. Right. So and sorry, it was sort of like because of the way that they, they move, the way that they cue, like what was it about, like what was it that was different about it? There's some maturity overall? Yeah, and also just like, you know, when I did start finally at working out at Real Pilates, um, I remember like, I was that person. They're like, how long have you been doing Pilates? I'm like, three years or whatever. And then I like get down on the form, they're like, okay, start with footwork. And I was like, what? Yes, <laughs> like yeah. that's, it wasn't like a thing. Like people didn't like <laughs> list exercises in the other studio I was at. And I felt totally like, blindsided and confused and I'm a type of person like I'm a very much a perfectionist and when I felt like they wanted something for me that I couldn't provide um I was immediately like I must get this so that was like for me it was like the the like the more advanced they were or the more they expected out of me like the yes. harder I wanted to work right and, and yeah, J it, JC Vitality yeah. just said the bar is set high at Alicia Studio and it yeah. really is and it yeah. shows and I think that's like really what attracted me to that space.
Absolutely. And I was going to say too, like being an athlete, I always come back to just like, what did we do growing up? Because I know that if, if someone had a sedentary lifestyle yeah. and their doctor said, I need you to start doing exercise, maybe Pilates will work for you. Yeah. When they get into that setting that is so competitive, they'll look at that like, I'll never achieve that. Whereas someone may have a different, you know, kind of A-type personality, look at that, look at that and be like, I'm chasing after that. Yeah, definitely. That's right? definitely, um, you know, I, I actually was not an athlete growing up. I literally walked onto the rowing team at Syracuse because I was tall. Like they like saw really? me and they're like, you should row. And I was like, okay. And yeah. I, I suddenly they were like, I'm like an athlete now, like <laughs> yes. division one. I was like, this is crazy. Wow. Um, yeah. But I only did it for one year because then I joined a sorority and that was like a little bit more exciting for me. But um, <laughs> it was hard to divide time. It's like, do I wake up at 5 a.m. or do, do I stay up until 5 a.m.? So, right. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, but it did teach me a lot about my body and exercise and that definitely like ignited a flame, you know, for physical activity for me. But I, you know, I, I'm just that person regardless. Like I, I could channel that into like a book that I'm reading or a project sure. that I'm working on or Pilates and I think, or exercise in general. Um, mm -hmm. And I do think that's like a specific personality trait. And I've spoken about that before with some other instructors on my mat and chats. And, you know, they say a lot of instructors who come from that ballet background mm -hmm. very much have that in them. Yes. Um, the desire to be like very perfect. Yes, no doubt. There you go. It's pause for a minute. We're, we're back. Hi. <laughs> nice. Okay. So Pilates snob. Yeah. So uh, how do we land that Pilates snob? And I, the reason why I ask it in that way is because I don't hate, people don't hate on it, but there is a lot of challenges I get with real men do Pilates, whether the real uh, part yeah. or the men part, there's a challenge in that. So I'd love to hear how you came up with the name and what the origin of that was and what the intent of it is. Yeah, I mean, I think there's nowadays, like everything is challenged, right? Like we don't have any, it's just like the world we're living in. It's the climate we're living in. And I totally understand, um, you know, everybody, everybody thinks they deserve an opinion, but then everyone's like, but everyone's opinion is wrong. It's like a very interesting time. Yes. Um, I know that, you know, even a studio named Real Pilates, um, Alicia told the story of why she named it Real Pilates on Instagram, like probably a month or so ago. And like, even there's backlash on that sometimes. But to me, it's like a no brainer, like real Pilates, duh. And like, same with the Pilates, I'm like, duh. But I think it started because my journey through Pilates was so like all over the place, kind of like roller coaster -y, or maybe just like, it just like zigzagged. And from like bounce from contemporary to classical to contemporary. And um, at the end of the day, I just realized like classical is like where I'm at. And I think a lot of classical instructors and people who do classical Pilates feel very similarly like you know we really only want to do Pilates like if it comes from a like a classical source and so I think it's t I hope it's tongue-in-cheek like I'm a Pilates snob and um recently a Pilates studio in in Canada was like would you mind if we made bar snob sweatshirts they're like we think it's so funny and I'm like yeah go for it so they made them I mean obviously like do whatever you want. It's like, I don't own words. Like right. this is trademarked, but yes. anything else, you know, go for it. Um, yes. And obviously it resonates with people and great. And, you know, I do think there are certainly people who hate on it, but I think that comes from a place of a little bit of maybe um, intimidation or, um, oh yeah, Tara, Tara just said, I also see it as preferring Pilates to other forms of movement that you love Pilates that much. And that's definitely true. Like I am certainly a Pilates snob. It's my preferred exercise method. Um, and then within that, I also prefer to just stick to classical Pilates. Right. So, right. yeah. Um, this, uh, Joel and I have joked about this. I, I, I make fun of bodybuilders from time to time. So I have a meme where it said like, if exercise, if the exercise was hard, they call it Pilates. If bodybuilding was tough, they call it Pilates. Right, um, yeah. Right. So, good, there's, like there's, so there's a tongue in cheek piece to that. Or even with cars, like I drive, I have manual transmission cars. So like, I'm a snob when it comes to cars. Like I have right. sports cars. If I look in a car right. and I'm like, hey, that's a nice car. And I look in it and it's automatic. I'm like, like, yeah. I have no time. For totally. That. Right. So yeah. that's one piece to it. Like, I mean, like I was thinking about this before, classical Pilates, is the origins of a thing and yeah. i love the origins of a thing whether yeah. it's an analog watch a manual transmission car right yeah. and cursive there's, yeah. there's Ooh, something that are one. all they're, they're all origins of something so it evolves but what do we do with that 
at the same time. So how, what's your response when people just straight up say you're hating on the other? Like, I mean, it's one thing to love one. It's another thing to express hatred towards the other. Well, expressing hatred, that seems very intense. But um, mm -hmm. as far as like, I'm obviously preferential. And to me, it's, really not a, even a question. Um, you know, this, somebody created this exercise system and he was very specific about what he created. You know, there's photographs, there's books. Um, it's very easy to discern what he wanted out of his system. And he left like a full, like, there's videos. I mean, like it's all there within and he put it all in a bow and we are to do what we want with it. Um, and so I just feel like, I, as somebody who was trained under somebody who trained under Joe, I just feel like I hold a certain sense of accountability to the method and to what the man wanted. And I think, yes. um, I think we should respect that as Pilates instructors. And I think that, you know, altering the method is one thing. Um, for certain, I am always modifying advancing i am taking pieces away and putting them back together yeah, you know i'm not regressing exercises right of course a yeah. thousand percent so mm -hmm. you know you might sometimes if you're watching me teach be like oh well, like what is that specific thing but then you're seeing oh like she was teaching them to build up to this exercise yes um but you know for the people who you know have a reformer and they just <laughs> Like, yeah, yes. I'm totally cool to make fun of dudes that can't drive a manual shift car. I can't drive a manual shift car. Okay. Uh, like, by the way. Um, yes. Okay. But that's not you know, okay. But we're moving on. That's fine. <laughs> I mean, like, what am I gonna like, like, go on some dirt road like somewhere and like learn how to drive a manual? Like, it just seems like where is this gonna happen for me? Like, I don't think it's <laughs> ever gonna happen for me. But um, when I come yeah, to like, New York, we'll 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 line that up. There Let's we go. Know. Okay. Yes, Deal. Um, but no, I just think you know they're people do think, yeah, I'm like hating on what they teach. Uh, mostly I just like, don't care about it. <laughs> like, you know, it's like, it's yeah. that, it's that simple. And I do think that we should be holding ourselves accountable. We should have a little bit more pride for the method that we're teaching. Like, if you don't want to teach it, like just create something else, you know, like, I don't really think it's that, it shouldn't be that controversial, really. Like yeah, there's, yeah. You're, do you play soccer or do you play something else that involves a soccer ball? Like it's, there's rules for every game we play. Right. Right. And so I think the same should follow suit for Pilates. Mm -hmm. Well, soccer is a good analogy, right? Cause you say, okay, well I'm playing on a 94 foot pitch outside that soccer, indoor soccer. That's not soccer. Futsal. That's not soccer. Beach right. soccer. That's not soccer. So right. someone's a Pilates snob and they hit on every other version and iteration of soccer. Right. Same yeah. thing? Um, soccer, I mean, I don't really know that much about soccer. So you just mentioned like all these different forms. I'm like, yeah, okay. Um, but, you know, I think there are derivatives of soccer. But, you know, if you're going to be in a tournament for soccer, certainly it's going to be a regulation field and everybody's playing by the same rules. If you're going to be in like a Pilates tournament, not that that exists, like obviously mm -hmm. the same rules would follow suit. You're not yes. going to put like... Um, like an arm spring on your bicep and like push yourself off a wall. Like that's not exactly, you know, that wouldn't come up in the method. And I think right. we should just try to have higher standards. Honestly, mm -hmm. that's really where I come from. Like I used to be really passionate about like feeling like I needed to like police the system to make somebody aware of what classical Pilates or just Pilates at this point. I don't even, di I don't really like think there's a difference or I don't differentiate anymore. It's like, Pilates or not mm -hmm. um yes yeah Ooh, some yeah so if you're yeah. proud of your type of work call it something else don't ride in the Pilates name because you are a, you are lazy lazy with marketing lazy well, with marketing you know and this uh, oh sorry finish your thought but I have, I have something that kind of ties in line with what you're saying there so um yeah I just think like the I was saying something about standards like I just think the standards for the Pilates industry have really uh fallen and it's unfortunate and um so i'm really here to be like this is pilates like mm -hmm. join in or don't but otherwise like if you really want to know what real pilates is like come on over because i'm here to like preach about it yes the um so yeah and the, the point i was going to make along with uh, what joel was saying here too is 
Um, so let me just read Tara's comment real quick. I'm a yoga teacher and uh, minor yoga is very specific to PKS learning I taught. I see it kind of the same way, right? Okay. Yeah. So the point I've said in the past with different guests is like, just label stuff as they are. So, yeah. And I've said it in the past too, if I'm teaching a yoga class, sorry, if I'm teaching a Pilates class, and then I'm going to teach um, a classical exercise or a regression from exercise, a yoga move in between. Yeah. Explain to people when you're leaving Pilates land. Totally. I always, yes. You know what I mean? So it's not even a question of only teaching classical. Like if you're teaching a regression yeah. of an exercise, totally. that's still, you could say, well, this is a setup for that. Like when we get lazy with our marketing, when we get lazy with our cues, when we get lazy with our teaching methods, that's when yeah. we lead people astray. And I think that as teachers, that's my main concern with this is that, yeah. um, you know, I've done this in the past where, you know, I've been covering a Pilates class and like I say a community class or some large group class and then watch the person teaching it the week before just so I get a sense of how that class is. I realize that three quarters of what they're teaching is yoga. It's like they're, they don't even yeah. have enough vocabulary to yeah. teach a full Pilates class. So I'm saying that's fine. But when everyone walks on the class saying we just did Pilates today and they just did right. yoga, right. then that's a disservice. So I'm not knocking the teacher or just communicate yeah. what you're doing. One of the best instructors, well, everybody's so great, but one of my favorite instructors to work with at Real Pilates, um, he has such an extensive exercise movement background and he takes so much from everything and brings it to the table when I work with him in the studio. And, yes. you know, when I work with him, we're mostly working, working on advanced Pilates stuff, like archival or what have you. And some of it requires like just so much upper body strength that I don't have. And so he will take me downstairs and he'll be like, Let's do a Turkish getup and I'll grab a kettlebell and I will do a Turkish getup and we'll, you know, we're, or he's like, okay, just come here and hang, you know, we're yes. doing things that are going to inform and improve my Pilates, but I a hundred percent am aware that that's not what I'm, he knows. And I know like this isn't Pilates right now, but we're doing it to make you better at Pilates. And I think that's fine, but I do think there has been a lot of um, people just like sort of taking like creative uh, advantage Please. of uh, the like how cool and hip and marketable Pilates is right now and so I think that's what has kind of led all these trends to kind of pop up and yes. market themselves as Pilates right right my friend is like an international kettlebell instructor and he has like great cool. systems and teaching all stuff and he opens his his workshop by saying there are exercise there are kettlebell exercises and there are exercises with the kettlebell Yes. Great. And I think 100%. that's the same. I think that's the same with Pilates, right? Like yes, there's, there's Pilates exercise yes. and there's exercise you can do on Pilates. On the reformer. Equipment. Right. Exactly. Yep. And I see the exercises you can do on Pilates equipment all the time. And it used to drive me mad. Now I just like now I just unfollow. I'm like, no thanks. Like I just you know, I used to be a part of like one of these groups on Facebook and I just like woke up like two months ago and saw it on my in my Facebook feed and was like, I don't think so anymore. Like I just mm -hmm. left the group. I'm like, no thanks. Like this isn't serving me. And I think if it doesn't serve you and just like walk away, you know, yes. um, yeah. I'm definitely not here to, I think there's been a lot of soapbox preaching in the last couple months. Totally. And I don't like that. It's not my way of doing things. I've tried to just like ignore and move on. And I just don't think, um, that that's really the way to get your message across. So for me, it's just like, okay, follow along if you like what I'm putting out there. And if you don't, then that's fine. I, um, I gauge everything in terms of impact, whether it's a job that I'm going for. I don't look at how much I'm going to get paid. I look at what's going to be the scope of my influence within right. that job. Um, so it's the same thing with whatever I'm doing. What is my platform? Who is going to hear what I have to say? I'm, right. I'm almost selfish with that. Like I, if I'm, someone's not going to hear me, I don't waste my breath on it. Yeah. So I could see how it could be frustrating when you're trying to police the whole wide world on what's classical and what's not when people aren't yeah. actually hearing you. It's not that they don't hear. It's that they're too stubborn to care. And, you know, they hear, they hear, of course, but, you know, they're also defensive. Like, what do you mean that I'm not teaching Pilates? Or what do you mean that my Pilates isn't real Pilates or whatever? And, right, right. You know, that's totally fine. Um, but I'm not, you know, I believe in inclusivity. Anyone is welcome at any time to work out with me, whether it's in person, online, whatever. I don't care what your walk of life or background is. But as far as like inclusivity and like what is or what isn't Pilates, like I, 
I just don't agree with that. I'm never going to. And I think it's just kind of like a waste of breath to try and to talk me out of my beliefs. And I'm not going to convince others that their beliefs are not the way that they should be either. So sure. it's sort of like, okay, like, absolutely. We can just like agree to disagree there. There's, there, I mean, well, that, and that's the whole thing. Like, and that, that's what I was going to with my point about influence is that you have to recognize yeah. that. Like, if those aren't your people, then why are you wasting your breath on them? Yeah, totally. Right? Totally. So uh -huh. I'm going to pour my energy into my sphere of influence and broaden that instead of trying to just evangelize people to other stuff. Right? Like, right. Right. So yeah. um, Benjamin Jurgenhart, do you follow him at all? Guy who did 360 Pilates online? Yeah, I know who Ben is. Yeah. Okay. He um, has a good point about just saying that like everything is contemporary after Joseph Pilates. Uh, I disagree. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't know Ben's like training background. Um, I don't know like what teacher training he, he did, but, um, you know, I, I totally think... not to disagree with him. Like I have no, yeah, no. and that's like, yeah. I totally understand. Um, yes, yeah, so people are paid, a, people are paid a lot of money to learn this type of Pilates. So they don't want to admit they paid to learn something that is just Pilates. Like, yeah. And I think that, you know, to that point and to the point about um, everything after Joseph is contemporary. I mean, not really. Like, I really do think like if you, if you can, I know people think the word lineage is like so like high end and like off putting and isolating. And like, this has been a part of the discussion for a long time. But I do think if you can trace your lineage up to Joseph Pilates, like you're teaching Pilates, like you're teaching classical Pilates. And, and you know, obviously I do think it's all a game of telephone, like it trickled down, things change, there's been modifications, you know, archival long stretch is not the long stretch we teach today. You know, things change and it is what it is. Right. Um, so yes, obviously, if you're gonna go back and be like, this is not exactly what Joe did, like, okay, yes, I get it. But at the same time, this is still the system he created and we're trying to stick within it. Like, yes, yes sure, we can make things more modern because, you know, bodies have grown or, <laughs> um you know we just increase like yeah. certain well, aspects but well even his equipment has changed i mean like it, right. it, how classical do you want to be like i don't see anyone with a mattress yeah. with springs in their studio right 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 exactly right? so yeah like things change and that's fine but i do think like as long as you're honoring like what he wanted to be taught then that's still that's still pilates to me the main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing yeah exactly there you go what is the main thing the main thing is, well, that's, that's a really good question, though, honestly, because I do think the main thing really has shifted because it's like, was it Joe or is it really Romana? Because like where we're at now, so many of the classical instructors have that background of Romana's teaching because she's really the one that implemented like the first true teacher training program and like brought that all over. So is that the main thing or is, you know, it's it is hard. And, you know, I have a little series as well on Instagram called a Matt and Chat where I do a very similar thing, except I have a much shorter little convo with, with classical instructors. Mm -hmm. And I really like to know, um, oh, Stephen said the main thing is the tradition. True, mm -hmm. yes. But, um, you know, when I work, when I have these guests on, I really want to know, like, where'd you do your training? Like, who, yes. what elder are you under? And mm -hmm. they're very different. Like, you know, I've had blossom under Kathy mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Risa Matthews who was with Ron Fletcher and then so many Romanas and Mari and like mm -hmm. no matter how different the elder was the exercises are the same the transitions might be different yes. the um the cueing may change but I'm never confused when I'm learning from a classical instructor you know what's interesting I was talking with Blossom the other day and I was saying like I'd love to learn from you and learn what Kathy learned and all those different yeah. things and and she kind of paused me there and she's like well Joseph Pilates taught Kathy as an injured dancer recovering yeah. Yeah. so that would inform a lot of what he prescribed for her, to her. so if yeah. I was to learn from her in that lineage right all those exercises are informed by recovering a dancer, totally. whereas I'm an athlete, male, non-dancer, all these different things. So you, yeah. like you said earlier about this telephone, the, it is passed down in a certain way, but yeah. then it's also the, the, the lens through which it's seen is also different too. So I'd be interested to hear like, you know, who are your mentors? Who, who in the classical world have you learned from that would inform this classical method in different ways for you? 
my God. Well, at this point, I feel like every sign I've said this before, but I feel like every single guest I've had on my mat and chat, I have learned from um, because the the first portion of my my the mat portion of the the live is a 25 minute mat workout and they teach me. So, mm -hmm. you know, I've been able to learn a lot of different um, approaches and styles from these instructors, yes. which has been very amazing. And I've taken mm -hmm. something away from every single one of them. And I've, I think I've had almost like 50. So it's like a lot of really cool yes. um, opportunities there. But obviously I did my training under Alicia Ungaro and um, within that, even our studio, we have, um, lead teacher trainers who led my seminars like Juan Estrada. Um, and, you know, I think I'm always learning from all of them and mentorship wise, like I try and keep it like super open because I just feel the more you learn, the more, you know, mm -hmm. and it gives you a more well-rounded background of the system yeah. itself. And to Absolutely. your point, like every, you know, every act, yes, he was teaching Kathy and Kathy's body, but you know, we all learn the full repertoire and then we have to figure out how to pare that down for the body in front of us and Absolutely. figure out, okay, like how do I serve this body and what they need? And so I think, um, you know, if you have that full set of knowledge, then you're more capable and more able to, to really help the client in front of you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Joel's point here, the main thing is complete coordination of mind, body, and spirit. Yep. There you yes. go. <laughs> yep. Exactly. Um, so who would you say then is your ideal client? Who is the person that walks in the studio that you would be like, I would train you for free the rest of my life because I just <laughs> love working with this type of person. So it's really hard to say. And like one of the coolest things that's happened, um, that's happened over time because I've been teaching now at the studio for a number of years and I have had some clients from the very beginning that I still teach today. So they've been with me maybe on like a three or four year journey, which is amazing. And I'm seeing these really incredible connections that they're making to the system. And many of them now have apparatus at home, which is so cool. Yes. And that to me shows that they're super dedicated to the system and they want to just keep learning. Like they're never going to get tired of it. Like they've made this investment and they're just like sold process. But that's like a very ideal client in the sense that they've done the work and now they're ready to work more. Mm -hmm. But I think I also have ideal clients who walk into the studio with a super open mind who maybe have done a different sort of Pilates in the past, but they like really are interested in learning what I have to teach them. And that to me is also very, um, a very ideal scenario that someone comes in and I'm like, okay, like this is what I got for you. So take it or leave it and if they take it and they come back for more to me that's like a great sign that they're they're on their way to really loving the system so people like that sponge right at the beginning of their journey yeah. and that person who is just like owning it from start to finish yeah but i mean i also have people that come in and like they're super no clue what they're doing have very little coordination or just haven't really exercised in the past which is so fine um and it's like one of those scenarios where you're like i can't believe they like keep coming back because it's like the slowest 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 improvement and yes. then one day there's just like this moment where it all clicks and you say like one thing they just do it or they understand and i'm like yes. oh my god and like they're <laughs> yes. then they become like the ideal client too yes. right you know it's hard to pinpoint like who the ideal client is because they're they take on so many different forms yes um, when I had Randy on here from Rooted Plotties, she said, part of my favorite answer to date, and she said, someone who is curious and someone who is courageous. Mm, yeah, I like that. That's yeah, so good. Definitely. I mean, I think you have to be super open because Plotties is freaking weird sometimes. So I'll be like, okay, you're going to put your feet on this bar, or this is a fuzzy thing you're going to hang from. And like, you know, people are like, what? Like, is this exercise? Like, I don't even know. And, you know, especially a very basic beginner. Yes. You might be doing things where they're like, I don't feel this anywhere. Like, what's this supposed to work? Um, so if you have, like, the courage and the persistence to stick with it, even when it sometimes seems yep. just, like, strange or bizarre, I think uh, also try, definitely, yeah. Try teaching it as a guy. Okay, now you're going to put your legs in these straps, and you're going to open your legs and spin them around. And, like, right. hey, trust me, this is exercise. Yeah, like, I know. know. Yeah, some of the stuff, I mean, I've had people be like, what's that? Like, you know, the yes. Cadillac with the fuzzies. Mm -hmm. like, that looks like like a sex machine. I'm like, yep, totally. Like, <laughs> a lot of foreign-looking things for sure. Yes, totally. Too funny. Patience and persistence. There we yes. go. Yes. 
Love that. Um, there's California Applies. Don Cola had a comment earlier. Always be working towards a full exercise series for those who are capable. And uh, yeah, so that's we we're talking about regressions and progressions earlier and just like, taking people through it. When uh, Elaine Ewing was on yesterday, she was talking about that as well. And actually, that tied into another conversation with plies and scoliosis, uh, Laura. We're all talking about the fact that, yes, it's one thing to teach people exercises and regressions and progressions of the exercise, but not to get comfortable there and always keep moving people towards the gold star of the exercise, so to speak. Yeah. And it's interesting how we can get so comfortable as instructors just going with the flow of, okay, the person needs these accommodations or, you know, and we'll just teach them there. And we never yeah. really keep pushing them towards the end goal of the exercise. So that's a great point. Right. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you have to really also like some clients just get like really set in their routine. Um, I have a client and he loves oh, short spine and he's very advanced. Like he can do anything. He can really do anything, but he loves short spine. And so after 100, he's always setting up for short spine. The yes. other day I was like, no, today um, we're doing overhead. I'm like, right. I'm very sorry, but like, you're bet Like, we can advance beyond short spine today. Like, mm -hmm. let's let's go forward. And he was like, because he just like really loves the stretch of short spine. I'm like, it'll come in later. Like, we'll do it's it later. Back. But you have to, right. Like, you know, you have to like, you have to make sure they're still staying on track because otherwise it can, it'll never be mundane. But I also want people to be questioned and challenged in their workouts too. Yes, exactly. Uh, and Joel is coming, uh, coming off of my legs and straps comment. Yes, and looking at their pelvis as you're working out, it can be funny as a male teacher. Oh, yeah. No, actually, so the instructor that I mentioned at the studio, his name is Daniel Lyon, and he's the one that comes from like a bunch of different movement backgrounds. He actually wrote a book. It's called Plotties for Men, and it's amazing if you have never read it. Um, yes, actually, I have. But, enough, yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, so he works mm -hmm. at the studio. I, he's great. But he also taught me from a very early, uh, like from early, very early on when you're spotting and if you're ever putting your hand on someone's thigh, for example, like maybe you're spotting like a side bend in the short box series, to like always have your hand with like fingers facing out yes. because like you would never want to have fingers facing in because it just could be like a very like compromising position perhaps like unintentionally, Absolutely. but especially if you're a man teaching a woman, it, you know, you have to be much more aware of like where you're positioning yourself and how. Yes. Oh yeah, those man. Like I, I'm sure for the guys who are out there who, who teach, like you're hyper aware of totally cues. I am. I lot. teach a lot of men too, and I'm very aware of that as well. Like it, it's, it's me, different I'm very, though. I'm a, yeah, I'm a, but I'm yeah. a super hands-on instructor, so yes. I also need to make sure like that they understand like this is literally just for like assistance and nothing more. So I feel like it can definitely go both ways. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, so it, it's really interesting in that in that process but we are 52 yeah. minutes we just totally flew through this time i know it's crazy how an hour an hour flies by mm -hmm. <laughs> absolutely um, and one of the questions i did ask you was like what's your message for your people right now so to speak right like i mean when people are just in the midst of all these adjustments and swirling around like what do you find yourself telling people over and over again at this time uh well, it's definitely been a crazy year. That's for sure. I forgot that I was literally 31. That's how great that's, this year has been. I like literally that. missed a year of my life and my age. Like I was like, oh my God, I'm turning 32. Like what? I feel like I need to redo 31. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, I just feel like my message for my people right now is um, like all aboard, <laughs> literally all aboard. If you're in with me, come on, let's go. Um, yes. I'm always going to be here for them. I am trying to bring like new and exciting and interesting content um like i've loved the matt and chats they've been super interesting to me and i've taken a lot from them and i'm just here to kind of like shout out um like my beliefs and my mission from the rooftops you know like i'm not going anywhere and i hope that people like find what i'm doing and saying to be informative i mean i'm really just trying to spread the good classical word really so yes. yeah love that yeah awesome. what's your message my message is, you know, it's funny. My message right now is your work is only as good as your rest. Your work is only as good as your rest. Nice. Your rest is only as good as your work. Either way. Yeah. Right. And, and yeah. The, the, the point is that like, uh, me, especially I'm just driving my business. I haven't taken time off, but I yeah. will take intentional rest times. And I think that a rest needs to be intentional and strategic. It can't be like crawling into bed or crawling across that finish line that needs to be woven into all that we do and not wait right. for burnout so right. i just feel like that that really is my message right now that drive hard but also play hard rest hard as well right so yeah i mean i think we all had to pivot in our 
you know, we all had to pivot our routines and when COVID came through, <laughs> like when COVID hit, I don't know. And yeah, yeah I, I agree with you because uh, it sort of started to feel like I was back in real estate again, right? Like always on call, working always all day on. long yep. because, you know, you're trying to accommodate every client and it becomes really hard to just try and take time for yourself to re repower and refresh. Mm -hmm. So I, yeah, I agree with that because if you don't have the time to yourself, even to just like practice your own, like, practice like just to do Pilates like you're never you're not going to be the the um, instructor you should be for your clients this Thanks Syracuse yes Syracuse. yes boop, boop. Yeah. Go Cuse. <laughs> um, and and, and with, with that reflection of just like that rest and stuff like I love like we were saying earlier just about policing not to circle back to our whole conversation but like yeah. a shift from policing to just celebrate what you're doing and just being strong on your message is is key yeah. to right like yeah yeah totally right. and so, I think that's important. I mean, just because I'm not like talking about like what I see out there doesn't mean I'm not still thinking it. <laughs> I mean, like just because I'm not like, that's not Pilates doesn't mean I don't scroll through and be like, that's not Pilates, but I just don't talk about it. Like, what am I going to talk about? They know it's not Pilates too. So whatever, like, if, you know, I'd rather talk to people who do Pilates. Yes. Yeah. Keep doing what you're doing. I love your mat series. There's fun. You've had some great people on there. Yes, we've had a lot of crossover. It's been really mm -hmm. awesome. Yes. It's been a lot of fun. I need awesome. to get like back on it. I took December off just because it's like a lot of planning. And personally, I've actually been incredibly busy with teaching, which is amazing. But yeah. um, it's hard to balance everything. So. Yes. Amazing. Well, thank you for your time today. Thank you so much for having me. Mm, no problem. I'll send you the replay later. And um, yeah, we'll definitely post some of our great uh, talking points from today. So cool. Awesome. awesome. Thanks, All guys, right. for watching. Thank you, guys. Take